Welcome everyone to today's webinar, the 12th of the year for the Blue Economy CRC. And today's webinar is called Decarbonising Offshore Aquaculture with Carnegie Clean Energy's More Power System. First, though, I'd just like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the past, present and future traditional owners and custodians of the lands that we're meeting on today. Today's webinar also doubles as a, the launch of this exciting new project. But first, um, I'd just like to, for those that are new to the CRC, just give a little overview of the CRC and our participants. You could just next slide, please, Leslie. The Blue Economy CRC has been around since July 2019, so just over two years old. And we're a collaborative um, institution with 40 participants from across 10 countries in the world. And you can see the partners in this slide. Carnegie Clean Energy, who we're partnering with today, is one of our 40 participants. Next slide, please. So today we're talking about the More Power Scale Demonstrator project. And the project has come, has come together with nine participants from the CRC, Carnegie, who I've mentioned, ACS Australia, Climate Pick Foundation, Hewan Aquaculture, Tassel Group, DNV, University of Tasmania, University of Queensland, and ANC Search. This is a really great example of bringing together industry, um, tech developers, and our university sectors to work collaboratively on a, on a project. Before I um, introduce Jonathan, I'll just give you a couple of um, housekeeping matters. Um, please, if you've got questions during the webinar, address them to the Q&A section. Uh, don't use the chat for that, address them to the Q&A and uh, John and I will attempt to answer as many questions as we can through, through the webinar as we go through. So today's presentation will be by Jonathan Pervez and we're gonna do it as a, a combination of a, a presentation by, by Jonathan, but also a fairly extensive Q&A uh, after the presentation. So we're really looking forward to, to your um, questions. John is the CEO of Carnegie Clean Energy, um, and we've been working uh, with Carnegie now since the inception of the Blue Economy CRC. See, Carnegie is an Australian-based company that specialises in wave energy devices. We have been working on several projects with Carnegie um, over the last couple of years, and one of the major ones we've been working on has been um, on the More Intentioner project, and, and the outcomes of that are leading into this new work that we're going to be doing on the More Power projects. I'm sure John will explain more about that. Before I throw to Jonathan, I thought it'd be useful just to give you a bit of a background about the inception of this project. And I guess it goes to the strength of um, uh, a cooperative research centre and the, to the strength of collaboration and innovation. So as I understand it, uh, John, uh, Jonathan was at a in the sidelines of a meeting was discussing with one of our industry partners, one of the agriculture companies, about the uh, work that he'd been doing with the CETO technology and how this could be used to you know, generate electricity. And, and through that discussion, they thought, well, actually we've got these barges and other infrastructure sitting out in the ocean. Is there some way of coupling the two, existing um, uh, infrastructure in the ocean with this new technology that Carnegie had been developed couple them together and what could happen. And this project is an evolution of that thinking. And I'm really excited that, that we've been able to, through this sort of bringing together different participants from different sectors, come up with new ideas and hopefully new solutions um, uh, going forward. So with that, I'd just like to then hand across to Jonathan to perhaps describe what, what more power is and to talk a bit more about the project. Yeah, thanks very much, John, um, and uh, hi to all our participants. Yeah, so as John mentioned, the um, I guess the way more power came about was really um, a function of the fact that the Blue Economy is a great institution bringing together groups around the, the marine industry and, and, and the Blue Economy, as we say. Um, and, you know, that was a, that was a, I guess a conversation that we hadn't had before. You know, we hadn't really had contact with um, with with aquaculture groups um, previously, and 
you know, we, as you see on the screen there, you can see our, our core technology and this conversation um, with one of the aquaculture producers was, um, was really, it, it kind of started talking about, well, how can CETO, um, this technology that's on the screen, how can that um, power these aquaculture barges? Um, and, you know, the, the first, I guess the first thinking is, well, yeah, we just, we just install our CETO devices and then, um, and then wire them to the barge. Um, but, it, you know, the, the, the collaboration kind of was open and, 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 and it was a really good discussion. And it kind of led to, well, why, why re reinvent the wheel? Why create an, effectively another um, structure in the water when you already have a barge um, that is moving um, in relation to the, the seabed, I mean, that, that's pretty much what um, our, our CETO unit does. So um, that, that really was the, the kind of epiphany, I suppose, that, um, that came out of that discussion. Um, and so, so maybe if I, I'll just explain a bit more about CETO because I think it then leads nicely into um, the more power solution. Um, so what you're seeing there on the screen is uh, is our core technology that Carnegie is continuing to um, to focus on um, and develop, uh, you know, and it's a technology that powers um, anything, um, but but primarily communities and and um, you know, coastal cities and things like that. Islands, remote islands, um, is a good example. Um, and the buoy, which is the the, the red part. Um, we call it the buoyant actuator uh, because it really actuates the power takeoff system through the forces of the wave. Uh, waves drive the buoy um, up and down um, and also forward and back. And the power takeoff is really the important part here. Um, and you'll see that um, it's, it's sitting there below the buoy. In some ways, it's like a winch that's holding it to the seabed. And as the buoy moves up and down, the, um, the winch or, or power takeoff, as we call it, resists that motion. And that resistance is the energy that we convert to electricity through a, um, a rotary generator um, and then, uh, and then in, into, um, through the dynamic cable um, and back to shore in many cases. Um, Leslie, if you don't mind just going to the next um, slide, we have a hopefully an animation that will play there just to give you a bit more of a sense of, um, of how it moves. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's, it really moves in, in, with, due to the forces of the waves um, pushing it uh, down and forward and back. Um, and as, as it does so, uh, the power takeoff is converting that motion into electricity. Uh, you'll see under the buoy there are the power takeoffs um, connected to the seabed um, and uh, yeah that, that motion um, is, is what's creating the electricity so what we what we thought then um, if you jump to the next slide uh, Leslie so what we thought is okay how, how do we how do we utilize um, you know and the benefit of, of having this this barge there um, and, uh, and so what we essentially are doing is, is putting the power takeoff on the foredeck of, of the barge. Um, this, um, this is a feeder barge. So I guess maybe just to explain for those that aren't familiar um, with aquaculture, um, in the background, you, you see a pen, um, which contains, um, in this case, salmon, but it could be other fin fish. Uh, and but we need to feed those fish as, and, and help them grow. And, and this barge here uh, contains all the food uh, that gets pumped out into those pens um, at feeding time. And it needs a lot of energy. And that, again, was something else that we learned through the collaboration um, and the blue economy is that you know, there's megawatts of energy required to do this work. Um, these, these are in, in Australian waters, particularly generally or quite autonomous um, uh, feeder barges that are, they're not typically manned. Um, and so there's a lot of control systems, video systems, communication, um, and all that's managed from shore. So they do need energy, they need it around the clock. And, and that's where wave energy really 
um, comes to the fore. So that that was also something else. You know, we really um, we really got to to understand in the early discussions is is uh, our, you know what are the the challenges facing the industry, um, and how can we help solve them with this technology. Yeah, so I guess going further into that, um, you can see a bit of a breakdown of um, the system components there. So, you know, there's just some icons there to try and describe the vessel loads on the left, which are the video systems, lighting, compressors and control system. Um, and all these loads, as I mentioned, add up to megawatts of, of requirement. Uh, you can see a generator there, which is the classical way of, of um, powering these barges um, and uh, they you know they they increase um, their their output as as the demand requires um, but as I said they, they do run um, around the clock um, and we we understand that also from the discussions that there's sometimes noise issues as well um, you know these generators will run um, hard at night time sometimes and, and in the right weather conditions, if, if the um, farm's not too far from the shore, it can be heard. So um, I guess that's another thing that, that came out of the discussion is that there, there can be, um, in, in some cases, um, noise uh, constraints. Uh, we've got um, a little icon in the middle there um, showing the hydrogen opportunity. Um, perhaps, John, do you want to just quickly touch on um, what's uh, what the blue economy is doing in in the space of hydrogen at the moment? Sorry, uh, that, that'd be great, John. I'll do that. Uh, so the blue economy CRC has got a, a range of programs that it's currently investing in, and one of those is the use of hydrogen as a a storage, um, energy storage and carrier device. And so what we've done at the moment, what we're doing now is um, building it through our partners, an electrolyzer, which we will, which turns water into hydrogen and oxygen with, with electricity. And we're going to marinize that um, and so that we can put it onto a barge at sea. And so we'll have a system effectively of, we can hook up to uh, some form of offshore renewable energy generator and, for example, a more power system, generate hydrogen on, on, on at sea on a vessel, and then we're building a system to then use that hydrogen to then power um, the sorts of vessel loads there that, that, that uh, Jonathan's identified, and as well also um, hydrogen fueled vessels that will better service the, the offshore facility into the future. So we're doing this um, with a view to aquaculture, but recognising that there are many, many uses for um, the offshore generation, storage and reuse of, of um, energy and through hydrogen. So that's a piece of work that we've currently commissioned. Um, and one of the great things about the More Power project is that these are like modules that will better click together with an end-to-end -end solution over time. And that's the plan. And it sort of goes to, um, if I just jump, keep going, Jonathan, it goes to some of the, um, I guess endorsements we've had for this project from our partners and and um, as I said early on um, Tassel Group is one of the partners in this project and their head of aquaculture and uh, talks to not only the growing need for sustainably produced seafood um, but the, 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 the sort of integration of renewable energy sources will able, enable aquaculture to grow seafood with a, with a low carbon footprint and so the, the hydrogen piece is we see is a, and it's a really integral part of that. The other good thing about hydrogen in this context is we also produce oxygen, which is also a very useful uh, product to have um, in an in a offshore agriculture facility. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, that was one of the synergies that struck us as well is that, um, yeah, producing, producing hydrogen at sea, you know, something that Carnegie is considered um, along the way and in terms of just our CETO unit um, producing hydrogen, um, there has been some studies where, where, where pumping hydrogen back to shore can be, um, can be cheaper in cert certain circumstances than sending electricity back to shore. Um, but there's still a technology gap 
um, in 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 that um, you know that's still work that's underway. But this is this is fairly um, you know fairly conventional by that standard, um, and you know for us you know we're focused on that more power system which is that right hand side um it will uh it will include a battery more than likely although it really re remains to be seen how we sort of balance in the future the the hydrogen and and battery elements because they both provide uh essentially a, a storage element um and and you know that's something that that kind is really looking forward to um engaging with uh, Tassel and Hewan, our aquaculture industry partners, um, as well as um, University of Tasmania. You know, they've, I mean, one of the key inputs to this actually kicked off um, over a year ago with a scoping study looking at the, the consumption of, of energy aboard these, these barges. So that's been a really useful input for us along the way. Um, and it's something else that this project will do is it will um, further instrument um, one of the operational feed barges uh, of our partners and, and understand the, the power um, consumption and, and needs of the vessel. Um, and so that'll make us um, able to just optimise the solution much more. So I'll just, I'll just continue on a little bit further. Um, you, you see in that image, the, um, there's the, the, the module slash power takeoff. Um, as I mentioned before, that's really just taking the power takeoff from our CETO device um, and optimizing it for this application. Um, we also have a controller that has to control um, the power flow uh, and, and the resistance. Um, it's worth noting that Carnegie is um, putting a lot of work into the controller for, for our CETO technology. Um, we've, we've had everything in the, you know, I guess in the past we've had the really basic kind of passive controllers and we're moving now at the other end of the spectrum, we're working with Hewlett Packard Enterprise um, and they're coming up with some, some great work in a reinforcement learning controller, which is an AI-based controller where the controller actually learns about how to control and, um, and optimize the energy extraction. So yeah, that, there's some, some really interesting points there. I guess it probably leads into another point as well is that um, I guess one of the things that we, we foresee um, and, and we would like to demonstrate is also how um, this kind of active mooring system can actually improve um, stability and station keeping of the vessel. Um, conventionally, these are moored with chains and ropes, and um, you know that's a well understood um, technology. But it's it's very much a passive system, um, so you don't get the kind of benefits of an active controlled um, mooring system. Whereas that's what this provides. So. There are some additional um, additional benefits that we see um, potentially with the, the station keeping and um, and the stability. In fact, you could imagine a case where um, you know just thinking ahead, where you know someone needs to get on the feed barge to do some maintenance, and and we could potentially switch the controller into like a high stable um, option. So it's actually it's optimizing more for, for barge stability than, than it is for power production at, just for that, that period. So yeah, there's, there's a huge number of uh, opportunities um, for us to, to make this a really good product for the industry and solve um, a, a bunch of issues um, to, to, to a large extent. Can I just jump in there, Jonathan, because one of the questions that's just come through it sort of leads on from there really well. And I mean, well, with the Blue Economy CRC, we are working very much on a future um, aquaculture industry that is moving further and further offshore. And we're seeing that trend uh, globally, whether it's into the North Sea off of Norway, going offshore in, up in Scotland, or the opportunities that the Australian oceans provide. Um, I guess the question is um, around sort of a bit around wave climate and how that, op how that it would impact one of these feed barges. And the question specifically is if the Aquaculture pens are near shore where the waves are lower. Would this reduce the efficiency of the of the CETO or the, the more power system? 
So I think sort of a bit of a discussion really about what the future looks at like the ocean, but other applications in the more coastal areas where, where aquaculture is also um, underway. Hmm. Yeah, so that's, that, that's uh, it's a good point. It's um, and it, and it, it's kind of as you mentioned, you know, we're seeing these um, uh, the the aquaculture industry um, looking to ensure that um, they're you know taking steps as all industries and, and businesses are um, further uh, towards um, sustainable operation and. That's that can be challenging in near-shore environments where um, there's not sufficient flushing of the water and um, and you do do get elevated nutrients in the water, um, but further offshore you have the waves and the tides and other currents um, in place to um, to help um, I guess distribute that and uh, to an extent where the environment can easily cope um, and that works beautifully for. Um, a transition to a more power um, energy system where, um, you know, these further from shore installations are, are more exposed to energetic climates. Um, the, the, the two aquaculture companies that we're talking to uh, or that are partners in this, um, in this project, um, Tassel Group and, and Huon Aquaculture, you know, they've both expressed um, interest in moving further from shore. I believe Huon, um, Already has um, a fairly exposed site, um, as does as does Tassel, that is in development, um, and we know that around the world that's that's also a trend. Um, so I mean, cl clearly there needs to be um, a, a good wave regime um, to get the most out of the more power system. Um, but bear in mind that this, you know, th these barges are quite large. Um, you know, they might be forty meters long. Um, they 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 do um, ride the waves quite nicely and um, and you know move with a lot of force. So yeah, it's it's um, you know we we definitely need um, reasonable waves, but you know it doesn't need to be an extreme wave location to to make it work. There's another question that's come through that's sort of on the same topic, and the question is. How does the water depth accentuate or constrain the power generation potential given the shift in aquaculture to deeper water environments? Yeah, um, so the, I mean, for, at least in an Australian context, the water isn't particularly deep. You know, if, if you go to somewhere, you know, like in the Pacific, for instance, where you've got more, um, I guess, volcanic origin um, islands, um, the water depth drops off very quickly. So if you go far from shore, you, you're in very deep water. But in Australia, um, you know, I don't expect these systems are going to be in, in more than 100 metres of water based on kind of roughly where, where we expect them to go. Um, <clears throat> and that, I would say, is, is true of some of the other big um, aquaculture uh, countries around. So, um, and, and from a technical perspective, you know, what, what happens with the more power system is that we have a belt for, that wraps on a drum at the right at the module, um, but that transitions into a rope um, to, to, make, to make up the distance um, to get back to the seabed. So that rope is, is, is relatively low cost and, and easy to extend. So from a technical perspective, you know, we, we don't really see water depth as a constraint. Um, you know, when we install these, um, the the anchors are installed um, without diving, so um, the the water depth really doesn't doesn't pose a, an issue as such. Um, maybe maybe just we could just touch on the project um, specifically, Leslie. If you just move to the next slide. Um, yeah, so just to just to explain, I guess what what pro, what the project is doing um, is and 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 how and how it's being done, I guess. Um, so what what we're doing is um, we're we're undertaking what we call the scale demonstrator project. So that is this is um, I guess the first project in in what we see as a two project program. Um, the first project being um, the scale demonstrator, where we where we demonstrate a um, 
a, a small scale barge with a more power system on it. Um, and the second um, project would be where it integrates with uh, an operating um, feed barge. So yeah, this is what you're seeing there in the image is um, is is actually where we're where I'm sitting right now. Um, it's Carnegie's headquarters in um, North Fremantle, Western Australia, um, and it's hard to see, but in the distance, there's there's actually a little vessel out there that's tending to our um, research zone that's offshore. It's about 300 meters off off the rock wall here at um, at North Fremantle, and so that's. Um, Carnegie's own um, area that the Fremantle Port um, provides us with for uh, any testing we, we do in relation to our wave energy developments. Um, and so that's where we'll install um, the scale demonstrator barge. Um, Leslie, if you go to the next um, slide, you can see an animation of the, of the scale demonstrator barge. Um, so it's basically, it'll be a, um, a flat top barge with a, um, a, a small sort of um, enclosed area for the power electronics and, and other, uh, you know, control related elements. And then it'll have the, um, the more power system on the foredeck um, looking into or looking out to where the waves are coming from. And so it'll really be a great opportunity for anyone, um, you know, stakeholders, um, uh, interested parties, to um, to be able to see more power in action. Um, and what we're really looking forward to is is, is showing the industry, um, the Tassels, the Hewans of the world, as well as the other um, groups. You know, we've got um, some some good conversations going with some of the, the manufacturers of these barges and the technology providers um, currently. And, um, you know, it'll really serve as a brilliant um, example of, of how this can, can work and, and give them confidence that, you know, they can integrate that with their, um, their system and um, expect a good outcome. So that's, that's I guess, the, the project that's ahead of us um, within, um, I guess probably late next year, um, we will have it in the water. So that, that'll be a massive milestone for us and, and a really exciting time when um, we, we first get to, um, to see it in, in the flesh um, about the end of, of next year. Um, and then we'll operate for uh, a period of months, depending on weather conditions and things like that. We, we wanna make sure we see um, sufficient amount of, of, of weather conditions to, to build the confidence that, um, you know, we've, we've seen, we've seen it right through some, some high wave conditions um, and we've seen its performance in low wave conditions as well. So I think, Jonathan, it's a, one of the first questions that came through links nicely to, to, to this and there's a number of elements to the question, but it, it talks, the questions that asks, now, who are, your, who are your major competitors or who are our major competitors and how far in advance or behind are they in their endeavours? And then specifically, though, about this is that what are the sort of the major obstacles in achieving our next milestone uh, in this project? So what is the, what is the, I guess, the research that you'll be doing with the partners in the project to bring this to uh, realisation? Yeah, OK, so... Good questions. Um, competitors, we you know we keep an eye on um, on the the, the landscape. Um, wave energy is quite a collegiate environment because um, you know it's a difficult um, technology to to bring to reality. So we we work pretty closely with a bunch of friendly um, uh, companies in the space. Um, we have we are aware of a few companies that have. Um, I guess put um, pictures on their websites of, of um, these kinds of systems uh, or, or, or at least a, a solution to this application. Um, but um, yeah, as, as far as we're aware, no one's actually um, gone to the point of actually deploying a, a, a physical device and testing it. Um, so yeah, this, you know, um, it could well be that um, when we first deploy this, um, it will be the first deployment um, of, of, its, of its kind. 
um, and that'll obviously be very exciting. Um, going to, I guess, the milestones, um, you know, for us, uh, you know, and what are the things we've got to do? We've got, uh, we've been very careful about who we've, uh, and very thoughtful about this, the partners we've, we have in the, um, in the project. Um, you know, the first, the first people that we need, we, we have spoken to, and we, we continue to, to speak to are, of course, um, the aquaculture companies. You know, at the end of the day, what we want to do is, is, is we want to produce a product that they really like and, and um, they'll buy. Um, that's, that's really the goal. Um, and, you know, it is it's delivering a bunch of um, benefits to them and we want to understand them better. Already we know that, um, like many companies, they, they all wish to decarbonise and, and this, is a, this is a challenging space to decarbonise. They, these vessels are out in the ocean. That there's not much space on them um, to put solar panels. Um, and, and so... That there's, um, there's, there's not that many options and, and this one um, provides a nice one um, from that perspective. Uh, the other thing is as well, just in relation to how they're currently powering these systems, um, you know, they, they use diesel uh, generators and, and that means they need diesel tanks um, and they also um, have to fuel them from time to time. And obviously the weather doesn't necessarily um, allow for, for that to happen when they want it to happen. And also, you know, it introduces some risk when you've got people carrying, um, you know, pipes um, from a refueling vessel off to the barge to, to refuel it. There can be incidents and risks of spills and things like that. So um, not to mention the commodity price, you know, I was, I was driving into, uh, into work today and I noticed for the first time there was a two- um, on the um, on the petrol uh, um, you know, billboard with the pricing. So um, I don't know about the rest of the country, but in in Perth, the um, the sort of unleaded ninety eights hit, hit gone above two dollars. So you know, it's a volatile commodity, and and that's obviously problematic for, for financial planning. Um, so yeah, they're the discussions we're having with um, the providers. Um, that's the first thing. Um, because, we, as I said, we want to we want to make sure that that this product hits the mark. Um, the other milestones um, are really related to um, the, the technical scaling and optimization uh, or adaptation of of CETO, um, the, the CETO power takeoff into the more power system. Uh, the good news is Carnegie's got a history of of understanding um, these power systems and batteries with deployed battery projects. Um, previously so so you know we've, we've got a good background there um, and um, yeah we're really confident with that we do have also climate kick and australian ocean energy group working in the project as well what they're doing is really looking at the market um, trying to um, can you know just um, i guess put the detail around um, who's out there who um, can benefit from this technology you know where in the world are all these people? Um, because at the end of the project, you know, of course, we want to we want to engage with the market because um, it's all about um, providing a solution to on a global scale um, here in Australia. So, and that goes, I guess, to uh, the the next question that I can see in front of me. And the question is, I suppose, more power system can be employed in any taunt mooring system for flooding structures. Is that correct? And I guess that I'll take the question a little bit further is we've been focusing on aquaculture as a as a as an end use for this technology or decarbonisation of aquaculture. So can you perhaps ask the first part of the question about can it be employed can it be employed on any taunt mooring system and then what are perhaps some of the other applications for for this? Yeah so there's is any number of applications um, uh, because there are many floating structures out there um, that you know are, are out in the ocean that need need power. There's um, you know there's there's surveillance equipment that defence use. There's um, environmental 
sensors that are deployed um, to measure all sorts of environmental uh, metrics. Um, there's, um, you know, oil and gas and um, uh, related um, assets, offshore wind, floating offshore wind in particular, you know, that floating offshore wind uh, are sort of the next um, new technology from coming in the wind space because um, they're moving to deeper water beyond the, the capacity of the fixed offshore wind um, technologies. And um, so these floating um, wind turbines effectively, yeah, that, that, that's another area. So, I mean, yeah, we, we can see that there, there are lots of opportunities. Um, the project will go toward um, discovering some of those uh, you know, we, we're sure that there's there's plenty out there that we're not aware of and and, and haven't thought of. So, um, you know, it's a really it's going to be a really interesting um, couple of years in this project, just from a, a market understanding perspective, because um, because it is the blue economy is so diverse, right? There's um, there's lots going on, and and there's there's new new things happening. I mean, we've heard um, people talk about um, you know. I guess, uh, islands that are created um, that are out in the middle of the ocean servicing different industries that could be refueling for hydrogen vessels um, mid midway, you know, out in the middle of the, um, the Atlantic, for instance, um, you know, that the energy that's required to, um, to power those things is, um, is, is the kind of energy that we can, we can create here. So, yeah, as as other um, as the blue economy, I guess, grows um, and it is growing very fast, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll be able to take advantage of of that too. So, there's a question um, around the funding of this project. Um, how are you funding this project, and what are the major catalysts that shareholders should look forward to? I might just start by giving a bit of a context from the blue economy CRC, and then throw to you, Jonathan. So. The Blue Economy CRC, as I said, was established in 2019, and it's established with funding from the Australian government. So we have a 10-year life as the CRC, and we have a $70 million grant from the Australian government. And that's been um, matched with our, um, contributions from our 40 participant organisation. So when we sum together both the grant from the Australian government and the contributions of our 40 participants, we have a budget over 10 years of about $320 million. From that pool, um, we um, look for projects with our participants that are industry-led. So if industry comes to us with a, a challenge or a problem or a, an opportunity, we look to bring together our research community and our participants and choose projects that we think um, meet our mission um, and have a chance, good chance of success. And so it's under that funding model that the Blue Economy CRC contributes to, to this particular project. But with that background, Jonathan, I'll, I'll, flick, I'll flick to you. Thanks, John. And yeah, I should just uh, reiterate our thanks to the Blue Economy for supporting um, this project. The, so the numbers are the, the, the total project value is um, $3.4 million, um, of which uh, in terms of cash, 1.35 is coming from the blue economy um, and 265,000 in cash coming from Carnegie. The, the balance is in-kind support from um, the partners uh, to, the, to um, the level of 1.8 million. Um, and that's pretty, you know, that, that in-kind support is actually really significant um, you know the the information that we're getting um, for, for instance one of the things we um, that's been done in the project is um, is we're installing motion sensors on um, one of the Huon aquaculture barges so um, and that's with the support of University of Tasmania so that's a really um, that's a really useful, uh, critical um, bit of information that's being provided and, and access to that data is also being provided. We're, we've, we're receiving drawings of, um, you know, proprietary drawings of the barges and things like that, which we absolutely need to do the project. So, um, you know, that, that, that contribution is really valuable uh, to us. Um, 
I guess in terms of, um, the, I think the, the question also included a, a point about just sort of what can shareholders see in terms of milestones. Um, so there will be, um, I mean, I think the major ones, there's obviously a lot internally that we, we monitor, um, but the major one will be when we begin um, the, the construction and, uh, and testing of the more power modules. Um, and then the, the next thing is they'll obviously, once they've um, completed their testing, they'll then be mounted on the barge and, and it'll be deployed. So that'll be the sort of second um, sort of really tangible milestone that will be quite visible because you know you can you can come down um, North Mole Drive here um, and look out the car window and, and see um, see what's going on. With we're we're producing um, you know any electrical energy here. Um, in this case, the demonstrator doesn't have, um, or at least we haven't we haven't firmed up what we're going to do with that energy. Um, so if anyone's got any great, great ideas about um, what to do with the wave energy we're, we're creating, um, you know, we can send it to shore perhaps um, through, because we do have a, um, a, a connection back to, back to shore into our building. Um, but uh, that's not how it would be in real life because in, in, in the feeder barge application, you know, our customer, and, and that's one of the beauties of the, the, the solution is our customer is right there. They're, the, the blowers and lighting and control systems are all right there. There's no need to run cables back to the shore. Um, but yeah, in the case of the scale demonstrator here at Fremantle, we, we will have to do something with the energy. And um, yeah, we're, all the guys are, and girls are, are sort of thinking about maybe something creative to do with it. Um, so yes, ha happy to hear su suggestions from, um, from the group here. So the next question, and that follows follows on again, and that is that um, have, have, has there been much work done, um, particularly around you know, financial analysis, um, about whether this product could be taken up by by companies once the technology is firmed up? So I mean, I, and I know we've been working on this for a while, so I know you know the sorts of letters of support we've got or you've got through. Um, some of the shipbuilders and the like, but do you want to perhaps talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I guess, um, you know, the, the financial um, benefits go beyond, um, I guess there's, a, there's an easy one in, in the fact that there's a diesel price and um, obviously that's quite variable and um, the, um, you know, you can calculate basically the, the, the dollars per kilowatt hour of, of diesel through the diesel price. Um, but then you layer on top of that all the additional benefits, which are much harder to, I guess, put a clear value on. So I guess that's one of the great things about this project. Um, and, you know, when you contrast it with a classical um, CETO project, in a CETO project, you know, you're producing electrons that, um, and there are some additional benefits to those electrons. They're clean. There's some, um, I, I guess there's some, some benefits in, in, in some cases in reducing the amount of energy hitting the shore, which, um, which reduces erosion and other things. But by and large, you know, the, the, the key product there is electricity um, and you're competing against a bunch of um, electricity producers um, in, in many cases, sometimes on islands, not so much. But in this case, you know, we've got a, a few, um, quite a, uh, I, I guess, a few benefits that um, we can value. Uh, so there's, um, there's clearly the, um, the fact that you're not having to transport um, diesel, you're not having to put at risk I guess, um, people having to access the barges, um, you know, with Carnegie ourselves and, um, and, and certainly aquaculture providers like you and Tassel would know very well the, um, the troubles with getting off a vessel onto another vessel out in the middle of the ocean. It's, um, it's, it can be quite an unpleasant um, activity and, and fraught with risk. So by, you know, that's a, that's a value add. Um, 
there's there's also the the stability point that I made the noise um, benefit. Um, you know the the other one actually going back to the fuel is the fact that the barges are uh, essentially a big hopper um, full of food, and um, so space is important because you want to store as much food as possible. But diesel fuel tanks and diesel generators do take space, um, so by by reducing them or removing them, you know, you liberate some more space. So there's there's a great deal of value there. So I, I guess there's there's all this value on the um, on the the customer side, but on our side, from com comparing back to CETO, you know, you you don't have to buy the buoyant actuator or build it um, because we already have the prime mover there in the in the barge. And, and you don't have to send the power to shore through a dynamic cable and the export cable um, and then deal with all the grid connection challenges that so many renewable energy providers face. Um, so yeah, it, it has an elegance to it um, that works financially as well. So they're, they're the things that um, you know, really inspired us to, to, to keep this project on. I think Jonathan, just to sort of go back to where I started in introducing this project, it started off over a discussion about the opportunities of decarbonising um, an operation at sea and all those sorts of things. And so this is the it's it, the initiation of the idea was driven by by industries coming together. It wasn't you finding a finding having a solution then looking for a problem to solve. It, it's sort of driven the other way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's one other question, Jonathan, but I also recognising that we're getting close to to um, to, to time. But the, the last question I've got is essentially, I guess, is there a limit here? You know, can you combine this technology with other forms of um, renewables, whether it's uh, vertical turbines or whether it's for wind, solar, to produce a sort of, a, I guess, an energy producing hub in the ocean? Yeah, sure. Um, maybe, Leslie, if you don't mind, just going back to the system components there, um, that'll also help the bandwidth. Um, yeah, so absolutely, you know, we, we certainly know um, that in many cases, the best solution is um, a combination of um, technologies and not just kind of use technology. Um, and and we're, we're quite, um, I guess, experienced in, in, in uh, introducing different um, technologies to wave energy. Um, so, and, and considering the consumers, et cetera. Um, so yeah, the, the expectation is that um, for some systems um, and some locations, uh, the best solution will be a combination of things. Um, I guess in the, what, what we've seen so far in the, the um, Tasmanian aquaculture um, context is that um, wind, with the wind resource is quite good, um, but there are some some challenges with um, with wind. It's um, it's it, you know, obviously has some aesthetic impact and um, some also some bird interaction that, that can be problematic, um, particularly in these cases because you do get a lot of birds hanging around fish farms. Um, and um, and the solar side of it, the space isn't um, you know you don't have a lot of space for solar on the barge and floating solar would be, would be challenging in a site where there's lots of waves, um, although it, it would suit a, a more protected area, I imagine. Um, so from those kind of classical renewable points, um, you know, we, we would certainly be capable and open to integrating others that, that fit in those applications. Uh, and we expect that definitely they will in, in some cases. Um, and, and thinking about other um, things like hydrogen, we, you know, we, we talked about that as well. Um, there are actually some developments in, in um, what they call um, uh, a seawater electrolyzer. So, so skipping the kind of desalination and, and going straight from seawater to hydrogen. So there, there's some new developments happening there and it, you know, it would be great to be able to 
to introduce um, introduce that in into um, into the system. So yeah, com combining these different um, new technologies is absolutely um, something that we're we're keen to do and and um, and we're capable of doing. Right. So John, I was just going to start to sort of wrap up now. Is there anything you'd like to sort of finish finish on before I before I wrap us up? Um, yeah, just just a final thing, perhaps is um, as you as you've done, you know, um, you, you pointed out that the blue economy has 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 brought this together. It really has. Um, you know, we we had a, a session in Brisbane um, earlier in the year, and and really that's where this this idea really started to gather pace. Um, so, it, more just a shout out to to thank the blue economy. Um, for the way they're conducting the CRC, um, because it's, it seems to be working um, really well, and, and all the partners, um, you know, we're really um, grateful for their efforts um, so far in 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 the project. And um, I know they're all itching to get underway, um, which which we 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 are as of as of two days ago. Um, so yeah, that that's a really exciting thing. I also like to thank the Carnegie team because. Um, you know they've they've actually done a lot of work already. Um, you know this we kicked off um, officially a couple of days ago, but um, you know that animation you see um, and a bunch of other work has has gone um, through. We've already received wave condition um, data from um, the, the the aquaculture providers, and we've been processing that data. So. Yeah, we're, we're well underway with um, the project and we're super excited about, um, about um, deploying uh, and showing everyone because, and, and, and that is one of the nice touches is that it will be here at Fremantle so anyone can, can come and see it. Thanks, Jonathan. I really look forward to coming and, and uh, seeing it from your, from your office across out into the sea there. Um, look, thank you everybody for um, uh, for joining today. We've had more questions than we've had time to answer, but we will follow up um, those questions offline that haven't been answered today verbally. So um, we will get back on those. Um, we've actually recorded today's session, and along with all of the webinars that we do, um, we they can be found on our website, the www.blueeconomycrc.com.au. Um, if you just go onto our website, you'll find, find our, our webinars. This one will be up by about Monday. It'll take a little time to edit it and render it, but we'll have it there by Monday. Um, and the website also has all sorts of information about all of the projects that we're doing in the Blue Economy CRC, including some more detailed information about this project and some of the other projects that Carnegie has been involved in. Um, please stay in touch with us. Um, obviously, you can contact us directly. Um, we have a presence on social media, whether whichever platform you like. Um, we have, uh, if you look at our CRC um, events page, you'll see um, webinars as they, as they come up. So with that, I'd just like to thank everybody for, for their attendance today. And thank you, Jonathan, and your team for uh, presenting. Yeah, thanks very much. And yes, thank you, everyone, for attending. Great to have your interest.